I'm glad. Oh. I don't want a pickle. I just want to murder hobo a little. And I don't want a tickle. I just want to murder hobo a little. And I don't want to die. I just want to ride. I just got to let him go. <laughs> yeah, Whisper. Let him go. Just let it go, man. Just let it go. Let's go. Oh. He is. He's hey, everybody. Welcome to Between the Rolls, the Murder Ho Inc. podcast. But I am not hosting this time like I did all last month. Instead, we have a brand new host, a wonderful lady who we are not going to talk over at all this time whatsoever. I would like to introduce her, Carol. Uh, uh, <clears throat> oh, gee, thanks. Uh, me from my with my brand new setup. I, mean, I got a new mic and I'm using my computer and who knows, maybe I'll do some streaming and mini pin at some point. So, uh, as he was about to say, I believe he was about to say, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archives. It says all our previous episodes of Between the Rolls and of the campaign and Cacophony and the Margaret campaign all one shots. Uh, we also have, if you want to buy stuff, and it said, if, uh, you know, the designs on the back, but this is this sweatshirt is the Murder Hobo Ink sweatshirt, or one of them. Uh, I love it so much; it's very comfortable. I actually got some Not Murder Hobo uh, <laughs> stuff right here. It's Murder <laughs> Hobo underwear. What? Let me just let me just get it right here on camera. Right. Oh, oh that's a wedgie. Yeah. Oh, you know what? This is not the murder hobo. Kyle, anyway. nobody Never does. mind. It's all good. Don't worry. We totally need murder hobo boxers or something. Uh, oh, it's there. Cool. Don't worry. That would be really cool. Uh, so, yes, we have a store, and I believe it's somewhere scrolling on the screen. I don't I'm like know. a 20 in the front and a one in the back. That'd be nice. Yeah. Cool. And, then, <laughs> and then, last but not least, we do have a Discord channel if you ever want to come and talk to us. Uh, maybe that's the point. I mean, nobody really wants to come and talk to us uh, because they'll just get talked over. But we have a Discord channel, and if you Dis ever want to come and talk, shop, uh, we'd love to talk back. So disgruntled. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, uh, without further ado, as I like to say, uh, I'm going to look. Cass can introduce themselves. Uh, let's start with, uh, let's we'll start with Scott. Scott, who are you? Although I said Hi. your name. And well, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm. My name is Scott. I am a. Um, I, I I used to be on a lot more, but work yeah. has interfered with my ability to be able to dispense of my of my musings. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a part time player and a most time DM here with Murder Herbo Inc. Um, as well as uh, I run a few other com uh, campaigns on um, uh, Fantasy Grounds and. Um, you know that's kind of what I do. I, I represent the the uh, the old people on this form. The old. Wait, are you really that much older than me? And I'm, Frank, I'm fifty. So you're no, okay. I'll be fifty in about a half a year. So okay. you do not the only one who represents the old. In fact, I think most of us are probably in the same neighborhood, right, it's David? It's me and Frank. We're yeah. the oldest. <laughs> that's so, good, but you see, I look old. That's the thing. It's the white old. hair, but white hair it is, is sexy. white hair. But white hair is, is sexy, so it you is. know. It is. That's true. Hey, we are silver foxes. There I am go. getting yeah. some heavy Kenny Rogers vibe. <laughs> I have a hard <laughs> no, throbbing no, what? <laughs> All yeah, right, David. Yeah, I, I, oh, I oh, do, down I, there, big boy. Down there. I I I, I kind of look like a cross between this is what my this is my friends tell me between like like Kenny Rogers and a Fat George Clooney. This is this is, <laughs> this is what they've said. I think I've seen that movie with George Clooney as fat as he is. Yeah. <laughs> hey, David, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself? Okay. Hi, I'm David. I am a Dungeons and Dragons enthusiast, uh, RPG enthusiast. Uh, some might even call a, a nerd culturalist too, because I have many interests as far as the tabletop role play and genre and stuff like that uh writing a little more like creating things 
stuff like that. Uh, I've been a regular here on uh, Between the Rolls. I am a regular on the Thursday sh- Thursday night show, Cacophony. I play Sadar, the arcing trickster. And um, sometimes I get lucky and get a one shot. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's me. Hopefully you've been following the shows and yeah, on to our next victim. Who All is? Right. So the next victim, victim, that would be a Kyle. Kyle, tell us a little about yourself and um, that nah, never mind. I'll let last Saturday go. Sure. Uh, hi, uh, I'm a mini painter. I hate to hey. see. And uh, what? Fuck you. Uh, by the way, this is for mature audiences only. Yeah, nice, nice time to disclaimer so, that. <laughs> so, guys, I just had a ghost tell me to go fuck myself. <gasps> a ghost? As far as I know, I know. Like, yeah, look at yourself. Me? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so, <laughs> all right. Uh, for all honesty, sakes. Hi, I'm Kyle. I am uh, one of the regulars on the campaign. Uh, when I deem it worthy to show up and gift everyone else with my presence uh and uh after after frank i am the second dungeon master of murder hobos but frank has me beat by about the same age difference as scott and i uh is the same amount of games run that i've run (laughs) of course let's pretend that i'm a toddler so that's age not difference the is age, a little bit big. The mileage, but <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying he probably has a lot of mileage. There you go. <laughs> what are <you> talking about <laughs> what are we talking about? I guess I should actually introduce when are myself we talking about it? if Kyle would stop talking over me, which will never freaking happen. Uh, guys, if you see me do this, I am both a musician, singer, you know, and I also have to mute. <laughs> <laughs> and he just muted himself. He did. So, uh, hi everyone. I'm Carol. I am. Uh, I'm going to change the order on you. So, nah. So, I am a longtime gamer and an occasional GM and a commission mini painter. This is a D and D stream that really should the gaming part should come up first. I'm also apparently a ghost because, as I mentioned, I changed my setup. I'm now actually using a real computer instead of a tablet and a real microphone, but I also have a very bright light overhead that is totally turning me white. I told Uh, you, pink and blue gels. That's what we used to use at the funeral home to make people look alive, so there you go. (laughs) So uh, so tonight, of course, we will start with the usual. We We will talk about the episodes this week, although I don't think we're Unless David, you have you watched Sundays, I don't think there'll be much chat about Sundays. Oh yeah, I did watch. Okay, did so you watch this week's? Yeah, I did. Okay, I did. so you can talk about Sundays. But I got, a, we, I got a little idea, but but before we get to that, we should start where we usually do with our cacophony episode, and that would be episode number a hundred and sixty-five. <laughs> Holy mackerel, we've gone on that long. Okay, cute. Kyle. Yes, we have gone on that long. <laughs> it is night of the long passing. So, David, what happened? Okay, so as Carol mentioned, she took she stole my thunder because I was going to get all spooky with night of the long passing. Uh, night of the long passing was the first of our Halloween offerings for for that week. Uh, it was. Uh, Spooky little tale with some trick or treating uh, with our main characters of um, Zadar, Camille, and Daphne. We got assigned to the Night's Watch that night and uh, we we're trolling the districts. Uh, Zadar just uh, decided, hey, it's just <laughs> like everything's locked up, but I bet there's a bar opening. <laughs> so we ended up going bar hopping in between encounters that night. Typical Halloween genres. We ran, we had a, a black cat run across our path. Turned out to be a black panther. <laughs> uh, we had, eh, eh, never mind. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we also uh, also thought we were going to run into a little werewolf. Turned out to be our little halfling friend, Skippy Lee, with uh, yeah, a wand, wand of prestidigitation. And that'll lead Skippy. us into our, our subject tonight. There was blood and howling it was just him with the wand when are you gonna murder him 
Oh, come on. How can we murder Skippy? Come on. If we it's do, we'll Skippy probably He's we're gonna bring him back to life. Single most friggin' annoying thing in cacophony. Well, yeah. Uh, I have a I have a soft spot for the little guy. So anyway, I thought Skippy was gonna be our little werewolf running around for that evening. It wasn't, it was just effects from the lawn. So uh anyway, uh we pressed on with uh, checking the rest of the city. We noticed that the lights were out at the lighthouse. Uh, spooky things were happening uh, throughout the night. Uh, two moons are in the sky over cacophony and eclipses were starting to con converge on both of the moons, making them look like eyes. So as things progressed that night, magic got weird. Our spells <laughs> didn't work. Uh, spoopy yeah it, it got got really weird <laughs> so anyway it culminated with uh with an encounter at the um at the lighthouse and then our final encounter ended up being we went uh onto the docks to the grindstone and was you know tolling cautionary tales about a mist that mo that wafts in from the bay and the spooky story of a ghost ship about a minotaur captain that was hung in cacophony and yes that became our final encounter with a ghost from the ghost ship so anyway it was a great episode check it out in our archives it, it was really it was truly a lot of fun and um yeah on to you carol oh and apparently rose is important i guess yeah yeah she met, i got mentioned She's living the pirate life, salt life. She there you go. is. She's still. Totally, <laughs> I didn't think she'd be back until they brought her in chains for being a pirate. Uh -uh. So that was our cacophony episode. Then we were supposed to have a campaign episode, but mm, stuff maybe, happens. Yeah, stuff happens. Life happens, unfortunately. And Kyle, two-year-olds are stupid. Two and they don't have a good happen. sense of balance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm glad he's okay. I really yeah, am glad. It's okay. He's I'm getting good. him a balance bean, and we're going to learn how to walk <laughs> without tripping. Yeah. Gotta start him early, Kyle. Little <laughs> tires. We're going to get like little tricycle oh, tires. Just have so him run cute. through. That'd be so cute. Nice. We're so, going to bust up his face even more. <laughs> so the, I think the meaning of torture for real is the fact that I have to wait now four weeks until. That was great. We we're, we're just gonna we're gonna stretch this out as far as we can. <laughs> I mean the, the the campaign such is it's oh my god it's on it's it's incredible and I have to wait another two more weeks before we get back to it. But so what she's saying is the next time we have a campaign, you'll be so thankful that we have oh, yeah. a campaign. Exactly. I, I am thankful every freaking week I get to play it. Okay, so I love it so much, but. But Which is it, every week. Mm, no, it's every other week. <laughs> okay. uh, but I will say, I will say this: it did give us an opportunity to have a special Halloween episode that Frank literally wrote fifteen minutes before the episode. I don't know how he does it because it was amazing. It was I can't believe he wrote that so quickly. It was uh, pretty written. It was no cacophony. No, episode. he said no. He said it was not. In fact, he actually changed something into two based on something Ernie said, and I'll get to that. It was called. It's so it was episode one hundred sixty-six, the Tower of Horrors. Mm. Uh, so basically, we were all out. So it was me. It was our, our normal Manise, so Chris, and uh, and it was Ernie, who usually plays Lucas. So we all grabbed third-level characters, and we jumped right in. So basically, we had disturbed something. I mean, this sort of got glo glossed over because it's kind of the intro. We sort of disturbed something in the graveyard, and we're just trying to find a place for some uh, to be to hide out in safety. And we came upon this tower, and we bit the plot hook and went to the tower. We could have gone elsewhere, uh, but we went to the tower, and it was an absolutely creepy, haunted place. Uh, I'm just gonna get the some of the highlights because I want to get to the topic. Uh, there was all sorts of crazy shit. We had to basically barricade the door to prevent the a bunch of zombies from getting in. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember everything that happened. So there was a lot that happened. Um, I said my favorite 
I'll go with my favorite moments. Uh, my favorite moments of the whole thing were, let's see, there we, we found, uh, oh God, there was the study that had the dwarven heads in it that sang a song. Uh, it sang all sorts of songs, actually. Uh, it started out row, row your boat and then went to some lurid, uh, you know, skanky uh, bar tune or sea shanty. <laughs> Uh, and one of the, one of the, I remember one of the dwarven heads was on the ground. So we actually had to put it back up so that it would be complete barbershop quartet. Uh, we also found a book in there that when it opened up, released a rhinoceros. What are you guys doing? I can see you all. So the it really. ghost of Carol passed. She haunts us still. Shut up. I'm going to fix this. I just haven't had time. I'm going to fix that light. Uh, I started to. I put something over to try to fuse it. But I digress because of them. So basically found a rhinoceros that jumped out of the book and went running past us and disappeared. I'm trying to remember what else the hell was in the place. That was one of my that was one of my favorite rooms. And then we followed it. I know I skipped some at the beginning. Then we followed it and we found a, uh, we found a really bizarre tea party. Uh, basically it was the rhinoceros and he had a monocle now. Uh, and it was a whole bunch of other, like a couple beavers and, oh God, I remember. And there was one, I believe there was one person there. Ice beaver. Was this they the just same had it show? This I mean. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did you watch it? I, no, this is I did, further on. But I was this is probably further, doing. This is fun. further on in. No, there was like a tea party, so to speak, or a dinner. Oh, what a lovely tea party. <laughs> you didn't, you don't remember? Uh, no. So go wow. on. It's okay. It's okay. That was like one of the most unforgettable things other than what happened after that. Because I skipped some of the beginning. Somebody, they got to have something to watch. You know, so watch the episode and either it's still on Twitch and it'll be on YouTube or is on YouTube. I'll have to check uh, it out. No, this the t the party was where um, I was the only one that made the will save and the other two became animals. Right. I saw that part. OK, okay. now I well, got it. Yep. Yeah, Manise was I believe Manise was the gator and Ernie was a duck. Got it. Manise, uh, Chris. I don't remember exactly the character names and stuff either, but so to be fair, she thing. calls me Dewey all the time. Yeah, it's all friendly mutton chops, Carol. Carol, it's Gosh. Kyle. Actually, know what it is? I call I, I, I no, I call you Dewey for your two characters that both begin with a D and are short. <laughs> um, but after that, so basically, they were turned into uh, animals. Right along with it. And then all, everything disappeared. Uh, ghostly server came and cleared off the table. And they res they got their forms back. So they were back to being normal. And then we moved on. And we finally could get up the stairs. Because we searched around for a while trying to find a way up the tower. And we got up the stairs. And we come to this long hallway. Which we see at the end. Two twin girls. And I was like, oh, God, I just watched this movie or part of the movie. I watched The Shining actually that very day. So that two twin girls with baskets. And this is why, why I know he, 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 I'm pretty sure he wrote it right before. At least that's what he claimed. And I do believe him. Uh, so basically, it was a riddle. The two girls would sit there and they said trick or treat. And there was like a force field that we couldn't go through. So I'm thinking candy so I threw some I don't have any candy so I threw rations at them and that just bounced off the force field so they go oh it's Frank running the show it's got to be gold so then I took out a gold piece and put it in one sister's basket and I could reach through the force field to do that and then she disappeared then what was really cool and this gives a little insight on you know if you're a GM it's it's a good idea be flexible because sometimes a better idea will pop up than what you had your own based on what players will say. So I started, I did the same thing. I handed a piece of gold to the other and she looked really sad. Like, and it didn't work. And then Ernie brought up, I was about to pull out a second gold to put in there. And then Ernie pipes up saying, well, maybe it needs a trick. <sighs> and so we had, we had our sorcerer, which is what Chris is playing. Um, Basically, Chris uh, basically performed a trick. 
And that made her happy and she disappeared. So originally it was supposed to be more gold, but then Ernie came up with the trick or treat idea. And that was actually really brilliant. And, and Frank changed it. And as I said, if you're a GM, that's a good tip to uh, follow, be flexible. Uh, and then we were able to get through and we did find, we found the, uh, found a bedroom at the end. And basically the Lord of the Manor was a werewolf and we had to bite the werewolf and it managed to bite all of us. And uh, two of us, I'm reasonably sure two of us did not make the save. So Luna, I'm really sorry. Oh, that seems like an appropriate name. But Luna is probably a werewolf at this point. It'll be interesting to see if I know they're one shots, but maybe we can work that in. I think, who else? I think Ernie's character also was the other one who failed. So those two of us that ended up probably being werewolves is at the, maybe right now, it's, the full, it's full moon. So that is a, that's a bit about what happened. It was, it was a lot of fun. And uh, it, it, did, it did take the sting away of not playing the campaign. Uh, it did, did make it feel a little better. But I can't wait for two weeks. You want to uh, know the worst part, Carol? What? I was ready to go at seven o'clock or eight o'clock. We could have been playing the campaign that night. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Why didn't you? Fr- did he not send you an invite? Uh, no, he did not. But to be fair, I did tell him that I'm you, going to the ER. Yeah, you said on a Halloween you, night during a full moon. I was rather surprised at how empty the place was. So oh, why COVID the, might have something frick, to do with that. <laughs> that might be it. So why the frick didn't you uh, come and tell us this, you jerk? I did. I showed up in the uh, Twitch stream. Oh, I didn't see it. I was no. yeah. Damn it. Yeah, but you. Were, but at that point, it's too late. <laughs> jerk. It was yes, and it looked so fun. I didn't want to ruin it. It was fun. It was fun. Mm-hmm. I know. Well, it's too bad you just, if you were late, you could just join, you know, wish you joined in. So that would have been, it was fun. We missed you. We missed <laughs> oh, you. Oh, thanks, guys. I'm just glad Arlo's okay. He's Who? a, yeah, your son. Who? Sorry. I have a Who? son? What? I don't know. The, you have shown, he's shown up before on the stream. I've kidnapped lots of children, yes. Yeah, I mean, sh- what? Yeah, sure. I mean, I have a son. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> he is a part. I do now. Doing. <laughs> he is a part. In fact, I believe you have more than one. So, so anyways, all right. So, on, to him. Scott disappeared just mm-hmm. as I was about to go on to the next part. Well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to give it to you because you're the one who watched sunday's episode which you is you meaning me right <laughs> yeah you you know well, me hey, meaning you. who you, you well, over there <laughs> yeah but you know it's not scott you know it's I'm not pointing Callum. directly at you actually did you notice i didn't point who who me i did not point who's me me who's me me, me who me yeah oh exactly. stop being a couple of assholes <laughs> david Errol, Mary... this is for the podcast we're just trying to be clear and concise okay. Well, David and I already discussed this before. So, David, why don't you tell us a bit of what you remember about episode 167, yeah. which that is the, is the operative campaign. word. What do you remember about the Margot campaign? Okay. The tide turns. Sunday night, our Margot campaign. It is a very, very funny show. Uh, three generations of players playing. And yeah, a lot of them are named Frank. <laughs> so anyway, makes for a very interesting show. Uh, the Margot uh, campaign picks up, uh, picks up again uh, where they left off on, on the Turtle Island. They're being assaulted by the, the Kroken, the Tabaxi Pirates. Uh, that end culminated in the battle. Uh, between our heroes and the Krokin, which they managed to uh, uh, thwart, but uh, not without a little collateral damage. Uh, Robert of Zeppelin, uh, I believe he is the one. Frank will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Yeah, did not, they they did not emerge unscathed. (laughs) you'll have to watch the episode to find out but one of them starts getting a little hairier and you'll start and you'll find out why it's a great episode folks 
highly recommend it. The Margu campaign. So if you're looking for something to do on Sunday, it's great. This 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 group's been playing a long time with Frank, and it's really a lot of fun. They're a joy to watch. So that's it. Sounds. I just wish I had more time to. I I need to start at the beginning with them. <laughs> uh, maybe someday. Maybe someday. I I enjoy the the games on this uh, Twitch uh, channel. So. Um, all right. So now we can get to the actual topic at hand, which is tonight we're doing minor magic items and minor cursed items, uh, implementing or creating them and putting them in your game. Uh, it's funny, Frank originally wrote as putting the magic back into magic, but that didn't make sense. I'm like putting the magic back into the mundane. That's, that's the way I think it should be phrased. Uh, so first question to the panel. Why would you, as a GM, want to put them, such minor paltry magic items, into your games? Uh, I'm going to start with Kyle. You're muted, Kyle. No, he's not. I can hear him perfectly. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can hear the rest of you. What? Yeah, fine. I'll, either I'll skip you and go to Scott. You heard the question. Oh, I I actually somewhat forgot it, but I'll let Fine. Scott answer it and guess. Fine, what you Scott, you can go first. Since we'll actually up. you have neither one of you talked for a bit because we neither one of you were in the games. Oh, All right, Scott. Break my heart, Carol. Why don't you? Why would you put either these minor magic items and minor cursed items into your game? Um, two reasons, either for flavor or to uh, or to uh, steer. So when I say flavor, then I'm, I'm talking about those are items that that add some type of a um, um, little bit of extra, you know, I don't know what you, you call it, flavor or spice. You get the right or, answer. Yeah. Yeah. No, you. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure hopefully our- Just something or you, or you want to use a minor magical item like this. To help to steer the uh, the uh, in other words, it has like almost an unexpected value, um, an overseen value, um, unrecognized value that uh, that you know when it exerts itself steers the uh, the uh, players either into sometimes unexpected directions. Um, so so I I, I kind of use them to either get people out of rabbit holes or to put them in rabbit holes to 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 kind of see what happens when they're in there. Um, you know, and, and actually I'll be honest with you. This is a kind of a thing I'll do whenever I'm behind in my, in my campaign type things. Sometimes a good side quest is a great, is a great thing to do to help, uh, to help the players, um, especially younger players or newer players inside a campaign to get to understand how to, how to work with one another. So a minor magical item, uh, is a good way to serve as a plot hook. So basically, that's what I'm saying. To to either have it use it as a plot hook, or to use it as a uh, as a as a spice or a flavor item. All right, David, do you have anything to add to that, or your own take, of course? Mm -hmm. um, well, like I said, uh, I've mentioned before on the show, my experience uh, has been with uh, young players. And uh, with the young players, and I was relatively new GM at that point, too. So, uh, yeah, I mean, creating mundane magical items for flavor or for or to steer the party is is definitely the way to go um, in a campaign that I'm running right now. I mean, we are just starting and the characters are first level and. You know, according to my storyline and where I'm having them go, I am about to introduce um, a way for some mundane items to be introduced to them. Uh, they may seem relatively benign, benign and kind of minor magical, but I mean, they do, uh, they do provide some advantages for them, which, you know, they're going to need. So, and... And I think it's going to help a lot. So I think when you think in terms of that, it's great. Uh, other ways that I see minor, uh, you know, 
uh, minor or mundane magical items with like wild magic effects or something like that. It can be a lot of fun. Uh, it also opens up a great way for your players to get really creative with it. So, but anyway, that's my take on it. I mean, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but uh, the things that I have done with it, I've really been happy with. So as a GM, I definitely recommend, you know, even home brewing, you know, minor items, get your feet wet, have fun with it, you know, so. All right. Good answer. Good answer. All right. Yeah. Uh, Kyle. <gasps> Uh, Do you remember the question? My name. Yes, it uh, is. Uh, uh, question was, why do you have magic items? Mundane magic mundane. items. Mundane. What, what why do you put them in it your game? Items? Why? Uh, well, very if much. you do. <laughs> if I do, of course, I don't actually. I don't like giving my players magic items whatsoever. In fact, I've already decided that plus one, plus two, <coughs> plus three armor and weapons is non-magical because I'm a dick. You are, oh, but it... to answer your question, uh, <laughs> why? Um, no, like uh, Scott said, flavor is a great way to start. I mean, when we're talking about creating a world and how much magic in it, the best way to do it is i mean you can say oh yeah this is a high magic world guys you know it's great and your players are going to make all fighters who don't use magic whatsoever and they'll walk around the world and be like yeah it's not that magical uh uh but you suddenly put in a mundane magic item minor magic item into everybody's hand and it's like oh yeah well this is my uh stone of oh what's the spell druid craft so I know when I need to bring my umbrella with me. <laughs> that is and then idea. all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, everyone in the world has magic. And so it's a great way to differentiate, you know, uh, Eberron, where they have magic as technology, where they do have your druid craft watches from, say, Forgotten Realms, where magic is more of a well, you got to go into the dungeon and find it. Not everybody has magic, man. Come on. <laughs> you know, that brings up I, that brings up like a question you had posed about, uh, you know, the level. You po the one you posed that I thought was interesting was about the level of magic in your world affecting, you know, whether or not you even have them or such. Uh, how does, to you, how does that, how does it affect your Monday magic items? Well, Carol, could That's you a good question. at least finish? Uh, let me finish the first question. Well, you uh, it was so... The other thing I was going to add besides... Okay, fine. ...was uh, it really brings out the creativity in your players. That's all I was going to add. Okay. okay. But you know what? The thing of it is, is what you were saying was so relevant to that question. It's like, it I just couldn't wait. So that is the question. The, the, I'm going with that as the next question. Is how do you decide... Yeah, no, it's like, uh, what the hell is it? I put said, how would the level of magic in, in your setting affect what you create, I think, is the way I wrote that question out. I think that uh, was It's such... more of how pervasive magic is and what kind of style of magic you have. When we get into magic items, at that point, that really speaks to me that med magic is now uh, a technological thing. And... Um, people should have easier access to it unless um uh again we're going with the apocalypse because i've been obsessed with that for the past couple of months and bring <laughs> wonder <that> why <laughs> i wonder why you know because no it's idea. not yeah. going on in the campaign at all or no i wasn't talking about that <laughs> but you could or have the real world so uh, uh your predecessor uh, civilization could have had your druid craft. Let's stick with this druid craft uh, wrist stone. Uh, but since the apocalypse, that thing has become null and void. And now your adventurers are on a path because they hear about this magic item and they find it, but it's still a mundane magic item because elsewhere does exist the same 
critique level. It's just in their current world, the current people don't have the ability to turn magic into a technology. Um, Mm. The other thing is that, you know, if you decide not to have mundane or decide to have, again, it's how pervasive the magic is in your setting and how it works. Can it, is it hard magic to where you can define it, you can put it, um, make a ruin on a stick, paint it with gold, diamonds, and fairy dust, and you have a magic rod, or is it something completely and utterly different to everyone, where if I do do that and then hand it to you, you can't make it work because it's how my magic works. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? I'll be honest, I completely lost track of what I was saying, and the last <laughs> half end of that was bullshit. And yet, and yet it worked. It totally worked for the question. I it's mean, just it's just a it, talking head at this point. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so that's what I was thinking is um, you have a low magic world. Does that mean these items should be less prevalent? Or could they be more prevalent and the more powerful stuff is less prevalent? It's that's sort of a thing to think about with this question. So, Scott. <laughs> I'm going to throw it to you next. So, you know, Kyle brings up a really <laughs> excellent point. So I have to drink. drink. Oh, is that what it is? Every time he brings up a good point, Kyle, Kyle brings drink. up a good yeah. point. You have to drink. Okay. Yep, that's true. Um, but you're not going to get drunk doing that. No, 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 I'm not. Um, um, it, it, it is rare. There are a couple of times I've been close, though, I have to say. When I was oh, drinking. Oh, sure, the, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. No, no, no. Seriously, there have uh, Whenever we've been playing, whenever we've been playing and you know you have three or four good ideas and i'm drinking you know tequila and um, um <laughs> fernet and i'll just do one shot of each and you know pretty you know i've done like seven or eight shots i'm like wow that's just pretty good anyway how are you still alive? Carol. so um it, it's a really interesting question because the level of ma- the pervasiveness of magic inside the world should dictate in essence the the split between powerful magic and mundane um, it should, but it doesn't always work out that way. So I'll give you an example. Greyhawk was when it was considered a very high magic world and lots of magic items. I mean, literally everywhere. You know, you're you're sitting there playing. Um, you know, some of the very basic. You know, first level, second level. You know, and you know the 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 cobalt chief is going to have is going to have a plus one. You know, sword. The hobgoblin chief is going to have a plus two mace. You know, that's um, it, it, it's 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 really interesting how how prevalent and how popular magical items were inside Greyhawk. And then they scaled all of the encounters to be as such to where the more powerful enemies required not just a play, not just a plus one, but a plus two or a plus three to hit. So the the ability to use the magic was also leveled with the types of encounters you were going to have and then you had this entire bevy of of uh, wondrous magical items that were you know and you then you had the you had the specific level of artifacts and it, it was just pervasive everywhere so that that's greyhawk and then you have a take a take something as Kyle was saying eberron to where magic is technology then you have, you know, Dark Sun, where you know it's it's a little bit different there as well. It's it's not as often. And then 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 Forgotten Realms, which is a low magic area, and at least at least in my understanding, is that you know magic right? It's it's much more quest related. You have to really kind of go out there and 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 adventure for it. And the the encounters in the magic in the monster manual are also reflective of this, to where you don't have the scale plus one plus two plus three. Instead, if you have a plus one magic sword, you know, you can do damage to a to a high level fiend. But all of that being said, what does that fit with magic, minor magic items? So if I'm playing a Forgotten Realms, um, I'm going to have a lot more of the mundane magic items. I'm going to have a lot more of the little trinkets almost. Um, we were saying that in the green room before about you know, how do you have trinkets? Because that's kind of how, how you're gonna have, um, you know, the little plot hooks about, you know, uh, creating wonderment and creating curiosity in the general population that says, you know, oh, look at this. I have a, 
I have a little thing that, you know, that can, that can fill my water glass when, you know, just, just something small, minor, but people understand that there is magic in the world, but that's all like, Oh no, no, but that's, that's for heroes. That's for adventurers. That's for, you know, you know, so it's almost like a, like a way to understand the heroic nature of, uh, of your players is that there's a lot of, I would have a lot of pervasive, uh, sorry, a lot of mundane magical items would be quite pervasive in my world if I were playing something inside, um, inside uh, um, um, fantasy, uh, sorry, Forgotten yeah, Realms. Yeah. But if I were playing Greyhawk, not really so much, honestly. Mm -hmm. Not so much, it, because that whole world is prepared for magic. And so when you're running around with plus three life drinking long swords, what do you care about a, a mundane item? You know, what do you care about a minor magic item? Everything is so effing powerful, right? So yeah. it, it's, it, it kind of, it gets drowned out by the noise. So that's, that's where I think the role of, uh, of, um, of, of high magic or low magic environments play. It's kind of switched. At least, at least, at least that's why I would do it as a DM. Interesting answer. All right, David. All right, I'll drink. Drink. Drink, drink, drink. Drink, yeah. Mine's not going to do squat. <laughs> Carol's switching to scotch. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't, I don't drink um, alcohol with this. Although no. I have some rum up there. <laughs> well, you may need to grab it after this. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I'm going with so with what Scott Scott said. Um, the campaigns that I that I've been in recently, and the one that I'm running, we're playing in Forgotten Realms, and it is exactly that. It is mostly mundane items because our settings are in settings like Waterdeep, Baldur's Gate, Neverwinter. Um, we leave high magic for high magic items, and the only way that you can get those are adventuring. Um, so. But the problem is, is my players really love role play. They really love the city. So it forces myself and uh, my girlfriend, who's, uh, who's uh, a GM, to really come up with creative, mundane things. And, and All right, here you go. Wand of glitter dust. You find it at the Water Deep Stripper Club. Exactly. They That's last the strippers before they go on stage. Such a, but that's or, such a great spell. I mean, or that's an great actual though. mundane item. You know, the perfume bottle of bewitching. You know, <laughs> it's just like, come on. It's just like you, you can work it like the grit, like the wand of glitter dust. You know. <laughs> So, you know, think, one, two, pl one, two. plus one to charisma, you know, there you go. <laughs> we broke Scott. Congratulations, guys. You it also broke gives the See, dancers. I swear I wasn't at the strip club. <laughs> I was <laughs> making a wand of glitter dust. Gives the, gives the dancers advantage on dex checks when they go for the pole. <laughs> oh, oh Lord. I guess I should have been even more creative on what I, I've, I've been. I don't know anything creative. about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, sure you don't. All right, you are, Texas. You I are grew up in New Orleans, so, man, yeah, I know all about it. <laughs> Scott, you're lying. You're going to be oh, lying, man. man. Uh, uh, all right, you know what? Sorry. I'm going to... But like Scott said, the, yeah. re the settings that I have is low magic to high magic. High magic is special magic that that levels and stuff like that was is within your characters that's their abilities and stuff like that and that's pretty much how we run it so all right so uh you know without uh anymore I, i'm gonna get to the fun part of the night so what i decided to do was go through the generic you know the general equipment and i'm gonna give them each a piece of equipment that i just found in the regular D, &D equipment list and they're going to come up with some nifty creative way to turn them into minor magic items and then into minor cursed items. Can I keep Aww. my so, wand of glitter dust? And I have a whole list, a plethora of stuff that you, I had prepared tonight. I, I think you absolutely should. I think I think Dewey should have a wand of glitter dust, by the way. All uh, right. Does. So, but no, you he can keep that. He doesn't know what it's for, though. But... <laughs> 
But with you, I'm going to give you, Kyle, I'm going to give you sealing wax. You know, like to seal letters and stuff. I'm David. sorry, were you talking to me? Yes, I am. Uh, but I'm going to go through the list first and then we'll go uh, in order. All right. So, David, I picked the almighty crowbar. And Scott, I picked soap. Because I have my feeling you might. Damn it. Say, soap, soap's a good one. So, but yeah. They're okay. all I good the ones. Crowbar? God. I think they're all good ones, actually. I can think of ma- minor magical purpose for, for, for all of them. You say um, crowbar. I'm such a nerd. First thing I think of is a death in the family. So it's like, oh my <laughs> God. There it goes straight to Batman. So. <laughs> all right. So, because this person said he liked it on hard mode. Kyle, what would you do with the ceiling wax to make it a minor magical item? What would I do with <laughs> ceiling wax? You know what it is, right? What, what would I do with ceiling I'm sorry, I'm not like 60, 100 years old. Uh, do you not know? Wax? Oh, no, you, do, uh, do you, Frank, you know what it uh, is, is, right? Very, very... Oh, yeah. Loves to use that seal. Yep. Yes. Yeah. He's, he has a seal too for that. Uh-huh. Uh, I spent the time learning how to open up letters sealed with sealing wax and then reseal them just so you, I could read Frank's letters. And you can totally get, you could totally do it without breaking the seal. In oh, fact, yeah, I exactly. think uh, on his blue scroll, they sent me for Gen Con that I never actually used. I opened it up without breaking the seal. Oh, darn, I thought I'd get you talking a little bit longer. No, are you really, is anybody ready? Oh, no, I'm not actually stumped. I had an idea as soon as you said it. Fine. I mean, my first thought was, okay, well, we could use sealing wax to actually lock a door or a chest. You just put a sealing wax on there and the door uh, or lock has to be opened via strength. Maybe a DC 11, 12 not very strong and then i thought to myself no let's let's actually use it for letters and uh i was thinking uh sealing wax of illusions because uh, i love illusions and so what you do is you take the sealing wax you pour it on and then depending on what you stamp into it you get a different uh uh illusion spell like say magic Ooh. mouth uh or something along those lines that's a cool idea. Actually, I like your first idea too. I like well, the, the first thought idea of using okay. It was a, I would probably, but being a magic item would probably bump up that that strength check just a little bit. Probably like fourteen. No, no, so it's not magic impo- items. Yeah, I know. Um, it's not it, like the Chinese finger trap or anything like that. No, I think with the first one, you're getting mm. a lot of creative player <laughs> uses, in that they take the sealing wax and they make the bad guy bind his hands together. And then drip hot sealing wax over his fingers. <laughs> but then he's now stuck together. Or something along those effects. With the other one, I imagine well, probably well, wouldn't find that one quite as interesting. But it'd be a way to just make a letter seem a little bit more fantastical. If as soon as you break the sealing wax, well, you now have a little droid or a Star Wars image of Princess Leia. That's Help cool. us, Obi Wan Kenobi. Your only hope. But to me, that defines a, a mundane magic item. That it's it's love. It is for flavor and for that fun stuff that you can do. So I know I think it's that's a great idea. Um, David, you had the crowbar. You gave me a crowbar. I gave you a crowbar. Okay, it's animated a crowbar cro- of closing. That's it. <laughs> no animated crowbar. How many times is a thief? or whatever you need an extra set of hands for opening something so that's what i'm gonna go with is an animated crowbar so uh it also um it is magical so you can get creative becomes a lovely mace (laughs) yeah i mean i don't know if this is too powerful but i would i'd be tempted to throw it you You get uh, advantage on trips Exactly. That bad. would be good. Or you could, uh, since it's animated, you could tie a rope to it and it could actually be used as a grappling hook. So, Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would fly up, and as long as though it could fit. I suppose crowbars are small, so that absolutely would work. Mm -hmm. That's that's a pretty cool idea. I was yeah. gonna say, if I went a little more powerful, you put a knock spell on it, and it could basically knock on something and open exactly. up. Exactly. Yep. Uh, that's cool. I like that. I like. I still like what you had. Uh, all right, Scott, you had soap. It has the innate and you're ability muted. to do. Scott, uh, you're muted. Yeah, he is. Yeah. You have so. the barbarian knock spell, which is you take the crowbar and. <laughs> yeah, you smash it. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking with soap um, for my Monday managing item, I would have um, something called soap of disguise. So what it is, is it's soap that um, when you use it, you can use it to cast the first level illusion spell disguise self. So if you need to go into, um, it's basically, it's a way for someone to try to um, get out of a situation for them to, you know, uh, if they go into an area, like I said, it's very, very narrow usage. That's that's why I see minor magical items and mundane magical items that have one specific use that you're not really going to need to use it until it's actually quite useful. So if you're um, if you're going into an establishment and then you decide to go to the you know laboratory and you want to leave as a looking like a different person, you use your soap of disguise. You would go into the thing to the laboratory to the wash basin, whatever like that in the back. And then you would use the soap real quick, cast disguise self. You come out looking like an elf, and then no one really knows. That's a nice, simple little thing. Now, for a cursed magical item, I like the idea of having a soap of um, bear attracted. I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> bear attracted. Bear, uh, bear attracting. There bear we are. attracting. Yeah. Oh, so that's you, awesome. You would never even know. So, so you go to the river to uh, to uh, to uh, take a bath. And, uh, you know, to wash yourself off and unbeknownst to you, you've attracted several very enraged black bears. <laughs> enraged or maybe there's some other, you know, emotion in there, too. Uh, well, and you know, it's got bear well, pheromones in it. I came up with something <laughs> similar tonight. So that is okay, enough, fine, it's fine. Not if, a magic if, if, if we're, if we're going like that, bears. you know, go ahead. But uh, but I, I was thinking it would actually you know attract the bear and then no, actually you know you know kind of make them upset. And no, you that's even fair. Really know it. You 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 wouldn't even know it at all that it's the soap that's doing it until after, maybe after two or three times you see. God, why is it every time I take a bath in this? I take a bath in in a river. A bear, <laughs> bear shows, shows up. up. <laughs> what if you're in a <laughs> town? To say, what if you're in a town like... and you're in a bathtub? Will bear show up at the? Uh, well, yeah, the it would have to be an idea of like you know if there's a bear within a hundred thing, and you yeah. probably have to roll to see the chance. And if you're in the yeah. forest, there's about a fifty percent chance there's okay. a bear around the area. You get a decanter of endless water. You shape the soap to fit over the thing. And you spray the big bad guy with soapy bear attracted water. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how that's you beat the big bad soap. evil guy. Once you figure that out that's what idea. it does, Once that would be good. That is, you can actually turn the curse around. That's right. That's right. That's good. And the term for bear is actually kind of broad. So it could actually attract an owl bear. <laughs> so. Oh, that's true. true. Okay. That's okay. True. I like that. I like that. Owl bear. All right. Well, what you really can do helps is you can have like you... a little table, right? You can it's either a mm -hmm. black bear, brown bear, grizzly bear, Kodiak bear, <laughs> polar bear, or owl bear. Yeah, I like that. I like that. A table. Yeah. Yeah, Your a players table. are busy trying to capture an exotic winged owl bear, and this is the perfect item to find it with. <laughs> oh Lord! All right, flying Did... owl bears. David, nice. yeah. I'll go with you next. Grab yourself down and the Since, shadow appears above you. <laughs> Since uh, Scott already went with his cursed item and he was at the end of the line. so Oh, sorry. Fine. I didn't mean no, to do that. No, it's okay. It's okay because you were at the end of the line anyway. So, David, why would you make a crowbar a minor cursed item? <laughs> it doesn't open anything. <laughs> you put it in a... You failed. You it's failed rubber. Your... It's rubber. It's rubber. It just, there you it go. Just, it, just, it just bends. It's and then just you, a rubber curl, crowbar. And then you can't get rid of it. You can't. That, a lot of cursed items you can't get rid of, and it's probably got weight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so probably. 
Sorry, that I'm is, stealing that, your no, idea. No, no, I'm so glad you did. That is, that is a great take on it. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, you do something, it activates its uh, curse, and yeah, it's a rub. You can't use it for anything. It just ties or it, or stuff like it bends. It's yeah, it's awful. Ah. <laughs> anything else uh no that's the biggie i i love that idea actually that is a great idea i love it okay kyle cursed ceiling wax what would you do oh. yeah he just i was gonna say would you just mute yourself on purpose so you don't have to answer uh obviously carol that's all i ever <laughs> In fact, I just use it so I can go on a different tangent and talk about something else while I think about how to curse ceiling wax. You had everybody else to go through. Oh, I didn't realize that they were uh, uh, both the same item. So now, yeah, I'm, I'm that's what I said. Them. It was gonna be, it was gonna be <sighs> the same item for both. I was Could you elaborate to... further on that, Carol? No. Uh, no, I was thinking um, just off the top of my head, uh, go the adamantine route. Hmm. And okay. that is you have to keep the sealing wax bubbling hot. Otherwise, it hardens and it becomes useless. So anytime you try to use this, you are maybe you keep it in a vial of ever burning or something like that. And you, you take fire damage every time you try and use the sealing wax. Wow. Oh. And if that was the case, I would definitely make it a lot higher DC for <laughs> your ceiling wax works like mercury, you know, just goes all over. That's <laughs> cool. Oh my god, that's really cool, guys. I I'll tell you what, I, I knew Carol, I drink. Was, I knew drink what well, yeah, like this is gonna do anything. It'll rot did, your teeth out. It will. That's about all it'll do. I, I, I said I've got rum on the fridge I could, you know, throw in there. And it goes really well with that, so. Channel uh, your inner Rania. Pull it down <laughs> from the fridge. Try anything else. Actually, Rosa probably be the one that's drinking the rum, but or maybe both. Maybe all my characters because I like, that's the my poison of choice. Come next week to Between the Rolls, where everyone becomes inebriated via yeah. alcohol. There we go. <laughs> well said. It's right. Th and I've got like, and it's most of the bottle of a crack of crack and rum, too. It's the big bottle. So All right. I would Quick, get guys, smashed. think of more magic items. He's distracted. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, all right. So, but yeah, it's sent with three minutes to go. I think it's time for final thoughts. So let's see. I'll start with yeah. you, David. I'll start with you. I don't usually always start with you. I usually just put you in the middle or at the end. I'll start with you this time. I had a list of stuff. I was just on a roll, man. I mean, I just had a list of stuff, but Carol just pulled the rug from uh, under us at the last minute to say, no, we're going for this format today. Yeah. No, no. Uh, final thoughts, magic items, mundane magic items. Definitely use them in your campaign and man, just get creative with them. You saw what we did tonight. I yeah. mean, it's really easy to do. I mean, <laughs> I had a list. Uh, I, I don't know, probably just thinking about it for like 10 minutes. I mean, I think I came up with 20 items. So, I mean, wow. it, yeah, it's, you can get really creative with it and your players will have so much fun with them. They really will. So, unless it's a boring and lame magical item in which case a shame on you exactly <laughs> all right kyle yes all right so uh how about you final thought final thoughts uh uh, uh if you decide to use mundane items which you know dm's choice uh these guys are nicer than i am so of course they do uh <laughs> uh i would just say um flavor best way to go about it make it do something really specific and at least come up with at least one idea about how you would use it differently and then <clears throat> give it to your players and then watch as they come up with even more ways to use it like the bear soap or the wand of glitter dust or 
I think honestly, my favorite story that I've heard is the ring of dispel, which was given to a thief so they could dispel magical locks as they pick little ones. And it just had to be within a certain area of the ring. Oh, nice. And so the artificer uh, reduced cannonballs, put the ring on the end of his uh, little barrel pistol, and then would shoot a pistol sized cannonball. And then it expand as soon as it left the barrel. So he had a handheld cannon. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Wow. I don't know that's if I awesome. call that mundane. That's, that's probably pretty that's un- probably not mundane. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> common. That's yeah. All right. And last but not least. Scott. Because yeah, no, I'm not afraid. She just to froze up. So um that's interesting. I just she just said least. And that's what I have to go with. So, um, <laughs> yeah, she's absolutely frozen up. Um, so, oh, that um, is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a screenshot. <laughs> We're putting Screenshot that on the it. We're going with that one. So, um, yeah, just real quick, my final thoughts are, just remember that mundane doesn't necessarily mean um, um, not useful. Mundane means there are items that you use every day. And the key to making them useful is finding a way to see what their stated use is, like a hairbrush or a toothbrush or something that, that, that has a mundane usage and finding a magical application. Um, and that's, that's, the, uh, that's the idea that you would have to make your mundane magical items uh, or mundane items magical. And then, of course, a uh, curse to that would be finding a nice little way to turn their expected usage on its head um that that would be or just a little little bit of a different thing that uh that makes it the hardest thing about a curse is being able to detect it's even cursed at all um that's that's uh that's the key to making a mundane cursed item is that people carry it around and then even it's cursed magic aura make sure your wizard has that spell (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's a good Detect point. That's magic a good point. Yep. So yeah, that's the, the those are my uh, those are my last points there, and um, um, it's I wanted to thank uh, everyone for being uh, for being for letting me come on tonight because I know I've been uh, sort of absent, but I still want to let you know that I, I, I miss you guys and hopefully I can yeah. start participating a little bit more. So this we, is we the voice of our... God. Uh, <laughs> we need you back, man. Well, hold on, real. Well, yeah, no, very happy to have Scott back. And I'm waiting for December, man. I can't wait. Yeah. I know. I know, man. Me too. Scott's, Me too. Got, a, I Scott's got a present for all of us in December. So <laughs> um, I, I have it all worked out. I have it all worked out. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. I have. <laughs> we're gonna make halflings, and it's gonna be such a different thing to be play. You play a race. You don't play a class. That's gonna be a. That's gonna be fun to show. That'll we'll see fun. if anyone lives past the first encounter. That'll be. That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. I push yeah. everybody in front. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, I'll take over. This is uh, this has been Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls. Carol is MIA. I, I think it, she exploded. We aren't sure. But don't <laughs> worry. We do have screenshots that we will post. Uh, oh, yes. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy our stuff or shoot the shit with us in discord both those links are down there most importantly if you want to join us on the talk show or on a one shot m hobo inc ah jesus christ no, Damn muter it. muter quick <laughs> fucking yeah. okay so we can all the believe... ghost is back so you guys didn't end the show i figured i'm telling you about it was we right in the middle of it <laughs>